Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borak, and this is going to be a preview to our Philadelphia Flyers against the New Jersey Devils that are 8-6-0, and as our Flyers are 8-7-0, and so pretty much pretty even record-wise for these two teams as the Flyers look to get the goal scoring going. Of course, they were able to pot three against the Carolina Hurricanes to get over that oh-so-difficult-for-this-team two-goal threshold, but they were not able to defend the Hurricanes well enough to be able to make that matter whatsoever as they lost that game 6-3 to three the other evening. In this five-game losing streak, the Flyers obviously <laughs> lost. They were able to pot three against Tampa and lost four to three, so at least they scored three in that one. Five to two against Boston, four to zero oh against Tampa, two to one against Florida, and six to three against Carolina. So when the Flyers are able to get three, then it's something else. So they have to be able to play a more concise, more thorough system. Yurif and I talked about it on um, the Flyers Nitty Gritty podcast this past week. If you want to go check that out over at Nitty Gritty, that the system it's a when you have players that. Obviously, throughout their career, you look at their numbers, whether it's just surface number, whether it's from watching them, I said wise, whether it's looking at like Jay Fresh Hockey or other good analytical people that have got it done throughout their careers, like the Cam Atkinsons of the world. Um, the, you're, if you're just not getting it done, it's sometimes that's just on the coaching and that's on the system and that's on wha- how you're implementing and how you're putting people in positions. And with the Flyers, they play a just throw it around the boards, play a boring chip and chase game. With guys that don't attack the boards enough, where you have in the first game up, Bunneman has a chance being a guy that crashes the net and also was attacking the boards pretty well. And then also, um, Patrick Brown, who just came over, was a good forechecker, good backchecker, was a guy like Lance Green wrote about as a missing piece of the fourth line because of how well he implemented himself when he first got here. You shouldn't have the guys that just get caught up or just get implemented in the system looking like the guys that are doing the dirty grinder grit and grind play the best where the Flyers have not done that enough this year Zach McEwen's also thrown to that group waiver claim has been one of our best forwards this year particularly our best forward in the bottom six so you look for guys that have kind of been here done that to be able to pick up the pace a bit fairby has been much better of late obviously he scored that very good goal the other day in an off game overall for the Flyers like Chris said it doesn't matter how nice of goals you score on the wrist line and blast or the fairby goal when he tweeted that um it just matters the end result but at least those guys seem to be picking it up where Risto's been good not a guy that's ever going to look great analytically if you look at Jay Fresh or anybody else I understand that but there's some guys that over kind of throw analytics away where they're just the physical the the shot blocking defense the guys that use their grit and grind play which is what Risto's been doing all season standing up for anybody checking guys into the boards playing well along the boards and now he's also starting to get like you saw at different times in his career more more play pushing up the ice using that slap shot a little more but the Flyers are not generating a lot of offense where Risto Line is not a guy that's going to get offensive numbers himself if you looked at his time in Buffalo it has to go because of the team doing well around him which has not happened and the same goes with Keith Yandel who hasn't been as squeaky clean of late he's a guy that gets his points because of the offense performing well systematically around him and the Flyers offense performs like crap systematically so you have to figure out something going forward it's good to be able to limit minus against obviously Cal- not Calgary against Carolina of late that you let them get six goals it's good to be able to limit your opponents to four or less goals obviously but then on the flip side you can't consistently score obviously four or less goals which is what the Flyers consistently do so you have to be able to balance out your system more. In the first year, the Flyers played very good in the forward checking. They played very good along the boards. They were a very good scrappy team in this season. And then last year, everything kind of once it hit the toilet, it stayed in the toilet. And that's why, like Jason said, people are reacting to this early season when we're still one above 500 with two key injuries, as damning as they are, because everything, when it went downhill last year, it never came back uphill. But this is a new season, so I think this season with this team, with the veterans they have, and the roster structure they have, they will eventually turn it around. We saw a Blues team of veterans. I ain't saying this team's winning the Stanley Cup. I don't think they're doing that. But had a very bad first half and then turned it around. They had good veterans on that team. This team has even more veterans that have been there, done that. Like, again, the aforementioned Atkinsons of the world. Hayes, when he's healthy, 
Giroux, who's been the best forward on the team at the age of 33, when you thought he would be a guy at this point of his career that helps the rest of the guys around him and kind of falls into place behind guys like Farabee, Couturier, et cetera, et cetera. But that hasn't been the case. So you need guys to pick it up for this overall team in order to get it going on both ends of the ice. It's a positive. It's a net positive with how great your goaltenders in Carter Hart and Morton Jones are playing. And it's a net positive in your defense numbers looking better. But when AV got fired from the uh, Rangers and the Canucks, what started happening at the end was you saw net positive in certain parts of the game, but you didn't see enough offense and you saw a more stagnant offensive system. And that's kind of what eventually got him axed. If I'm the Flyers, I, I think Terry is the guy that needs to go first. And then you kind of work your way from there because he runs the offense a good bit. He runs the power play. And Mike Yomore runs the defensive system, which he's always been known for, and that's been working okay. The offense has been terrible, and ever since he came in, the power play has been getting worse, not better. So that that doesn't make a whole lot of sense um, why he's still around. He's a coach that's had success, obviously, in the past and is known in the hockey community. I'm not saying he's a bad coach, but he's just not getting it done here. Like your reef said, all these guys that get their job, and they've been doing it for day in, day out for all these years. They're not bad coaches. They're just... Some guys don't fit in certain situations, and it seems like Michelle Terrian is one of those guys with the Flyers, and he's still on the bench. And you either need to get rid of him or just hire somebody else. Well, yes, it does admit that he's not doing his job, but if you want to keep him for other aspects, bring in someone else that's just known to coach a power play and to be more efficient coaching an offense that's just known as an offensive mind that can kind of implement guys in the right spots. Honestly, somebody that failed as a head coach after a couple of years, but when he came into the structure, looked good pushing their pace offensively, getting the most out of his players, was Colleton in Chicago. So maybe as an assistant coach, he doesn't have to worry about the overarch of everything you have to worry about as a coach, which is kind of what nipped him in the butt in the end. Maybe Colleton just focusing on one main thing could be that guy. Who knows? That's just a name to throw out there if you're bringing in a coach and you're not getting rid of the head coach. You're getting rid of a guy more like Michelle Terry and if the skid keeps going the way it is going. But everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been a preview to the Flyers playing, of course, a difficult um, competitive opponent, which is everybody in the Met this year, in the New Jersey Devils that are towards the end of the retool period now. And starting to move towards being a competitive playoff team. So this ain't going to be an easy game. It's Blackwood versus Jones. Hopefully Jones can have as good of a performance as he did against Florida to really keep us in that game and make it look like a more competitive game throughout than it was in certain parts of the game. But hopefully Jones continues his great success. But the big part of this is not Jones continuing his great success. It's the Flyers systematically playing better on offense and figuring out a way to get past the threshold they need in goals to be able to win a damn game. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe up above on the easy-to-use widget or down below on the easy-to-use subscribe button. Let's go, Flyers. Let's hopefully turn it around tonight and get off of that five-game skid.